It's 4 o'clock in Port Orange, Florida. It's 1 p.m. in Redding, California. It's day three after AT&T and DirecTV launched their attack against Newsmax. The feedback we're getting is off the charts. On one hand, members of Congress are promising actions that range from hearings to investigations to stopping all government payments to AT&T unless and until they abandon their ideological bigotry against conservatives and treat both sides fairly. On the other hand, the folks aren't waiting. Emails, calls, and social media posts all tell a similar story. Americans who had shown decades of loyalty to American Telephone and Telegraph are angry, disgusted, and fed up with the woke cancel culture. They are choosing to vote with their wallets, leave AT&T and DirecTV, and that is causing a surge in business to companies who compete with AT&T and DirecTV. We'll highlight one of those companies. Without fear or favor, the Chris Salcedo Show starts right now. Happy Friday. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chris Alcedo Show here on Newsmax. We'll have the very latest on the blowback against the left-wing favoritism being shown by AT&T and DirecTV a bit later in the program. Meanwhile, we'll focus on the harm that AT&T allies, socialists and the Democrat Party, are doing to everyday Americans and their families. Today, I'll be using the preamble to showcase one of the many deadly dangers of Joe Biden's Democrat border crises. Border officials confirming there have been at least 1.2 million illegal aliens that have gotten away while crossing the border under Joe Biden. We don't know who they are. Terrorists, ruthless gang members, or foreign military, we just don't know. But with China, its primary source of fentanyl, you know, into the United States, China needs easy access to Americans, and Joe Biden and the Democrat Party has been over backwards to give our communist enemy all the access they want, and it has deadly consequences. New data revealing that last year, over 110,000 Americans died from fentanyl poisoning. My next guest lost his son to Joe Biden and the Democrat Party's border policies. Phil Munford joining us now to share his heartbreaking story. Phil, thank you very much, and well, I appreciate you taking the time, and I cannot fathom the loss you and your family have endured. Tell the folks out there what you what you shared with me on my radio show earlier this week. What was your son's history, and how did fentanyl take his life? Yes, sir. <clears throat> First of all, thank you, Chris, for having me on. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Uh, it's a joy to be here, even under the dire circumstances. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, my son... Uh, when he was 20 years old, this was about 12, 12 years ago, uh, he had a major surgery on his neck. He had a, a carotid body tumor that, that grew uh, it was a fibrous tumor that grew from his neck. And uh, the result of the major surgery that he had uh, basically caused him to have uh, major pain because of the nerves uh, that were that were uh, severed during the sur surgery. And, and it created a a syndrome called first bite syndrome, which uh, essentially meant that my son, uh, just looking at food, would have severe pain that would run down his jaw and into his, his uh, into his chin area, and it was just very excruciating. He also uh, suffered vocal par paralysis as a result. Um, but through this, uh, my son was introduced to pain management uh, by the doctors to uh, to help manage things, and you know. You can just put two and two together, and that was the beginning, really, of a, of a long downhill spiral uh, in his life, getting addicted to the opioids and and uh, just through trials and tribulations, just uh, his 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 life just uh, just was very difficult for a long time, and he had a lot of support, uh, loving people in his life that that uh, were there every step of the way, and. Uh, and I never stopped. I never stopped trying to help him and other family members uh, the same way. And unfortunately, well, wow. for, fortunately, and, and if you need to stop me, please. Um, uh, but the long story short was uh, he, he went through recovery and was doing very well, uh, got back on track, had, had his job, uh, was actually just living living in a very good place. 
and something happened uh, right before Thanksgiving, and uh, he uh, he used one more time, and through that uh, it was it was one 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 shot, and uh, it took his life, and it was uh, November eighteenth, and I got the call the next wow. morning, November nineteenth, that that uh, that my son was was gone. And uh, yeah, probably- it, was, it was some of that it was some of that junk that was laced with fentanyl that got him and he had no way of knowing. And of course, he, right. he injected it and he passed on. Look, the Democrat Party, along with Mitch McConnell, uh, with John Cornyn and 16 other wretched Republicans voted in lockstep with Democrats prohibiting border money be used for border security. When you heard that news, what was your reaction? Oh, it's it's just deplorable. Um, I tell you, uh, you know, when I called your show, uh, I, I made the statement that if I had the chance to stand in front of Congress, uh, stand in front of um, the Texas Congress where where I live, and and address them as a as a real person, uh, somebody that this is, uh, you know, it's hit. I it's just it's destroyed uh, destroyed his life. Uh, I'm not going to say it's destroyed our life. We will pick up the pieces and move on. But uh, this this is something that is just happening. You know, right now, fentanyl is the leading cause of death, I believe, of uh, of adults between the ages of uh, something like 25 to 40. Um, it has to stop. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, this isn't by accident. This is, uh, in my opinion, an all out assault on our young people to to take their lives. And, uh, and it's the, the occupier, the occupier of the Oval Office, Phil, and the Senate and the House, the, your government is responsible for what has happened to your family, responsible for what happened to 110,000 other Americans. It is their fault. They simply refuse to secure that border. And uh, your, your son died needlessly. And, I, and it pains me to say that. But, sir, you have our prayers and you have our thoughts, and I appreciate you coming on today and sharing your story. And hopefully some members of Congress who might be watching might reach out to you to hear your testimony and get it officially put on the record so at least this Congress knows what they've done to you and your family. Thank you very much, sir. Thank we you. appreciate I'd your like time. To stand. I'd like uh, to stand even with though, you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Even though a majority of your Congress and multiple occupiers of the Oval Office, except for President Trump, don't care how, mu- how much pain and suffering that they bring through their promotion of illegal activity at that border. The American people do care and have reached their breaking point. Americans are willing to take matters into their own hands when it comes to defending our nation at that border. Since Joe Biden, the Democrats, and an alarming number of Republicans have abandoned we the people, here's the new polling from the Trafalgar Group. Convention of States revealing that uh, nearly 52% of Americans would support their governor if they asked for citizens to help defend the southern border.